I think so. Early in the show once again, let's bring in the heritage moment. <laughs> so the actual story of the T8610, how it happened. I was sitting on a beach uh, up right up the top of Western Australia. I was in this little uh, this little place called Honeymoon Bay, and I was with uh, two really good mates at the time. And I was towing an X1, and it was during the first 12 months of uh, of taking the X1 to market. And we had a Polaris Razor up there with us and we were sitting on that beach around the campfire that night, a couple of beers, and we were kind of sitting back and I said to the boys, I said, how cool would it be if I could take that X1 and put that Polaris Razor on the back of it? And that is how the whole thing started. <laughs> so for us, camping has always been as much about the toys as it is about anything else. Whenever you see us rolling Patriot games, you see the whole crew going, we always have boats and quad bikes and dirt bikes and we're into all of that sort of stuff and, and obviously side by sides. So the TH610 was predominantly designed to take one side by side. At that time, the Razor, Polaris Razor was up and coming. That was the first uh, uh, wide track side by side. It was over 60 inches, 62 inches, I think from memory. But most of the side by sides come in at, at 50 inches. So we designed that deck specifically uh, to take the early Polaris uh, Razor 900s and then the bigger um, two-door 1000s when they come on the same with the 62-inch wide uh, kit. Who is this trailer best suited to, Tom? Yeah, look, the, the, the people are sort of looking uh, at Toy Hillers, you know, people who have toys, they have buggies, they've got bikes and they're kind of going away on trips and they're taking a car trailer with everything on and then they're taking a camper trailer as well. I mean, that is designed perfectly for those people. People who, when they go camping, they take toys and that and that is really as simple as that. And that's really what it's all about. And you see those images that are flicking up in there, um, you can see just the size of that deck, the layout on the deck on the T8610 really accommodates any type of toys that you could possibly uh, want to, to carry, obviously within a dimensional limit, um, but anything that you want to take out camping with you. Now, pricing on the on the toy haulers, on the toy hauler range, we're probably not going to get into that, uh, I think, in this episode because um, they're so customisable, aren't they? That's right, yeah. They're really the only product that Patriot Campers produces where we really customise them to the customer, don't we? That's it, yeah. That's it, exactly. Depending right. on the gear that you want to take. Now, the TH610 also has a bigger brother, which is the TH730. Um, let's throw up some specs on, on these two trailers. So you can see that spec sheet there, the TH610, uh, its name derives from its length, uh, 6.1 metres in length, which is 20 feet, and it's one, what, what do we got there? It's 2.4 metres wide, I can't quite see up there on my screen what that is in feet. Um, but look, like I said, the TH610 was predominantly designed to take three dirt bikes, two quad bikes, or a two-door uh, side-by-side. If you're carrying bigger than a two-door side-by-side, four doors are very, very popular now. Me, personally, I have uh, a Polaris Razor four-door now that I can take the family in. If we come back to that graphic, uh, you'll see the 730 comes in at 7.3 metres long. Fundamentally, the only difference between the TH610 and the TH730 is the length of the deck. One is designed predominantly for four-door side-by-sides, whether you're running a Polaris or a Can-Am, they will all fit on there. TH610 is for your smaller two-door side-by-sides. Um, they've both got an ATM of 3,400 kilos, they're tw uh, 2,400 litres of storage, and draw bar weight is probably something that we might, we'll touch on now, we'll talk about it when we get to the chassis. I mean, yeah, we can talk about it now, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, they're running, um, you're running about 250 kilos on the draw bar, and look, it all depends on how you load it as well, I guess. And that's, that's the reason for it. So when a, when a toy hauler is unloaded, obviously the dynamic uh, load changes when you put something on the back. So when you're running a side-by-side -side on the back, they come in at about 160 to 180 kilos on the draw bar. When they're running dead empty, they come in really heavy on the draw bar, but still under the limit of what most vehicles can Absolutely. tow, which would yeah. be 250 to 350 kilos uh, on the tow bar, depending on what you're towing. But they're still very light, you know, when they're dry, I mean. Overall, they're, they're amazing. You see the size of them, 1,340 kilos off the top of my head without the text back up there. 1,540 <laughs> kilos, it's been a little while, I'm not in sales anymore. 1,540 kilos, you're talking 3,000, 3,200 pounds if, uh, if you're looking in the United States. Yeah. And that is, you know, for a trailer of that size, in true Patriot Campus fashion, uh, with the technology, the engineering that we put into it, we keep that light, uh, that light weightness. That's it. 
And it's probably worth um, talking about now. They are available in the United States. They are available in the US. So um, our dealer in Oklahoma at Exploration Outfitters currently has a TH730 on the floor. Who else has one on the floor here? Oh, uh, New South Wales Off Grid Outfitters has a TH610. I think they've got a boat loader on there as well. So you can see them here in Australia as well. And then obviously we always have one here on the floor at Patriot HQ. If you want to get in and see one, uh, contact your local uh, or your closest Patriot Campus dealer and they'll let you know uh, all the specs, dimensions, do the pricing for you and customise it based on what you want. So I think without further ado, before we do that, Graham and Ryan, Off Grid Outfitters yep. and Camping Adventures, New South Wales and Victoria. Once again, they're going to be here on the live chat. They're going to be answering all the questions as we go along. They'll give you all of the information um, that you need. But at the end of the show, we're going to do the Q&A. Uh, we'll collate all of these questions that come through and the ones that pop up, and you'll hear it, I suppose, from the horse's mouth, from Tommy and myself, um, the answers to those questions. That's it. So let's run it. I think we start with the chassis once again. Okay, let's do that. We'll get you down to the showroom. Go and show everybody this bad boy, and let's have a walkthrough on the big, the big boy at Patriot Campus here, the TH610. Let's have a look at the chassis. I'll see you down there. All right, so when it comes to the chassis design of the TH610 and the TH730, it's, um, it's another major accomplishment here for the engineering team at Patriot Campers when it comes to the design of this thing. I'm going to show you a little bit of footage uh, throughout the show on what we've put these trailers through and it still absolutely blows me away on the punishment that these chassis uh, can take. The whole thing's riding on the Cruise Master XT suspension on air, which Tommy will run you through in a second. Um, Drawbar dimensions, are, they're a little bit of an odd dimension. They're a 127 by 52 by three and a half mil wall. And we'll get to that when we get back to the chassis. The way that thing is designed, it is completely unbreakable. I can see here on my camera, uh, Tommy's on my monitor, sorry. Uh, Tommy's down there in the showroom. How are you, mate? Hello, Justin, I'm here. Yep, good to, good to see you again, it's been a while. Oh, mate, absolutely. Mate. <laughs> Let's go through it. Let's run through this whole bad boy because I know a lot of people are going to be genuinely interested to see um, what's, what's sitting underneath that trailer. These are unbelievable and I think with our experience with these, with all, all the trips that we've done, it just they're proven time and time again that you can literally drag them anywhere you want and they're going to get you there and back. Um, we'll start at the front. As always, a DO35 hitch from Cruise Master, uh, teamed up. Um, there with your 12-inch um, electric drum brakes on these, okay, so they're, they're bigger, they're going to suit a bigger wheel, they're a 17-inch wheel with standard. Um, but as you can see, they're extremely easy to use, uh, maximum articulation um, for all that sort of four-wheel driving, you'll see that in the, the videos to come. Um, you've got a jockey wheel on there, and we also, we, we put that up on the drawbar, um, which is obviously uh, out the way, so we don't have any um, jockey, bar, um, jockey wheel failures. Uh, and then you can see this nice drawbar. Now, this is your standard length. There, we don't option an extended drawbar like you would see in the other ones, as you, you just won't need it with these when you're, when you're running a tray back or a bigger car. Um, but you will see a bigger safety chain as well there, uh, as it is bigger. We spoke before, it's a 3,400 kilo GVM, um, which means you've still got that much load capacity, being 1540 uh, dry. Uh, and then obviously we spoke about your um, load on the drawbar when we're traveling. But what we'll see, we'll get under to the exciting part because this is the exciting part. If we have a look under here, you can see how well this is built and how strong and what we've done to keep it that strength. Um, you can see we've got our spare wheel under there, okay, that's tucked up right away and it doesn't um, affect any of your four wheel drive capabilities. It's not going to get caught up on. And you'll see we've got those large. Uh, stone reflecting mats to stop any damage uh, to suspension or brake lines and things like that. But everything on here is a hot dip, in, uh, sorry, laser cut, uh, interlocked and then welded hot dip galvan galvanised chassis um, and that's what's giving you that such a good strength. You'll also notice that they're a little bit wider um, than your typical trailers um, that we, we produce. Um, so they're full wheel width wider, which means you need something really good and sturdy here um, to take out any trees or bushes that you might be um, driving past on the tracks. 
uh, or even a, a few banks or two. Um, I, might, I might actually interrupt there, Tom. I might come in there on that, um, those plates there, those bash guards. Now, from my experience uh, back in those early days uh, of towing big trailers out around the bush, um, it was they're so susceptible to damage and damage by the width of the trailer. Now, obviously, being a toy hauler, we want to maximise the, the the area on the deck. So we've gone for maximum legal width here in Australia. Um, they were originally at 2490. We've just brought them back to about 2450 overall wide. I think might be a little bit underneath that, so we could fit them into the containers and ship them overseas. But those bash guards that you see there, can we just zoom in on there on the thickness of that plate? Again, I'm going from memory. This is going back about five or six years ago when we designed it. They're about a five mil plate there. They're welded back into those main chassis stringers. And I will prove to you right now the punishment uh, that these things can take. I'm gonna bring on another heritage moment. I'll never get sick of that white little frame. I love it. Um, now, when we took this thing out for its really its first shakedown, uh, we took it on our, our season one of Patriot Games, and it was its first real proper trip. Um, and we ran it up into um, up into Cape York, and we took the thing uh, down the old telly track, and we done the old telly track in reverse. Uh, we winched the, one of these trailers with the black truck up a gun, up gunshot, but the day after we hit Palm Creek, and I'll quickly show you a clip of what happened when we went through Palm Creek. Oh, pretty steep, boys, huh? Yeah. How is it? Yeah. Listen to those brakes carrying on. Yeah. Oh, touching the mirrors. And the toy hauler is grinding. And I'm hung up. All I could do was plant my foot. First gear, held into it. I felt the trailer hook up again, that parachute feeling. But sure enough, with that momentum, bang, 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 we knocked out the whole embankment on both sides of Palm Creek. And we got that truck and trailer through there. Go to the 79. Go to the 79. Yes. Well done, boys. Is that, who was that guy without the beard? That was, that was, Tommy, who was that guy without the beard? I've got no idea. He's not the man I, I know, though. That's for you, sure. You, you remember that trip, eh? Uh, look, I think, you know, just to see the trailers go through what we put them through uh, mm. in Cape York and to see one of these do what it did was incredible. I mean, I remember looking at your dad just thinking, how are we doing this? You know, yeah. um, it's really cool to see. Well, look, my, my dad's actually a tool maker by trade and he spent a lot of uh, time as a boiler maker. And I remember on that trip, uh, I think uh, one of my buddies called it the handover because I remember straight after that, my dad was just shaking. He said, he's like, I, I, I don't understand how this thing didn't bend or break uh, when we went through that. So that, that, was, um, that was pretty amazing. Mate, continue. Okay, I will do, thank you. Um, yeah, so what we'll do, we'll also um, look at the, um, the mud guards there. Now, obviously they're, they're not structural parts, so they are fully aluminium. You've got the strengthening bar there, uh, so you can load on your, your, your gear from the side, um, as well as coming up from there. So and you'll, you'll see that in a few things there. And, and it, sorry, mate, sorry to interrupt, as I was talking about before, so if you are running a 72 inch wide uh, side by side, um, like most of the new, the, the bigger razors and uh, the Can-Ams, uh, your front wheels will go up and sit on top of the guards um, and that'll give you that extra width. So it's, 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 there's not much you can't put on it. No, and you've got the tie down points there as well. So you can, you can strap your wheels down as, as best you need and it, if you want to put a bike on the side and that sort of stuff. Uh, look, they're designed to take absolutely everything. Um, look, we'll talk about here as well. We spoke about the 17-inch um, wheels with the 10-inch electric drum, 12-inch uh, electric drum brakes. Uh, and they're in a 5x150 uh, LC200 stud pattern. Uh, so that's your offset. Um, now this one here's got the Mickey Thompson tyre upgrade. Uh, they come standard with, a, with a, another mud train tyre. Um, and then if we have a look under the back here, because I think <coughs> this is a really cool part. 
is the fact that you've got these strengthening sort of skids, I suppose. So when you get into a situation where you do have a bit of a, uh, a gradient, you've got to climb up and you've got to drag the back up, these are there um, to, to help you up there um, and get you through wherever you've got to go. Tommy, I've actually got another clip there, mate. Um, those oh. sliders, they, they are a fundamental part of the design when it comes to the toy hauler. Now, the concentration on the X-Series range of trailers is uh, always departure angle, so we don't want the back of the trailer being hung, hung up or getting damaged. With a toy hauler, that's obviously uh, not possible because of the long deck um, and the centre of gravity, gravity for where the wheel placement needs to be. Um, you can actually fit a TH610 or 730 with 35 inch tyres. That's what they were designed for. But getting back to the sliders, uh, they are a fundamental and integral part of the chassis design. And I'll, I'll show you just what you can put these things through. Let's have a look at the footage uh, from Arnhem Land with our flat deck uh, TH730. Hold up there, mate. Oh, no. Good and proper uh oh That's in there, mate. I'm just worried it'll slip off straight away, you know? As soon as you start I, moving. I need that little bit. Just need to get that wheel over, yeah. eh? I'd say an inch. Yeah. Oh. Keep going. This is the strongest <laughs> part of the trailer. <laughs> hey? That shows you strong, winching it off that back point there. They're strong, man. That's unbelievable. You can't break these things. All right. A little bit more, Nath. One more click. OK. We're on it there. Go down, and then get rid of that jack. And then we'll go down, get rid of that jack. And I reckon, Matty, we should be able to pull her over. Yep. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Let's start. Series two of Patriot Games. Make sure you head over to that YouTube channel if you want to see what these things are all about. That trailer in particular there, for that trip, we had to carry an extra buggy. Uh, so, of course, we have the advantage that we built ourselves the TH730 without the front box on it, but identical chassis. Back over to you, Tom. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, that was, uh, it was really good to see that doing. I'm devastated I wasn't on the trip, but, you know, we'll, we'll continue to laugh about that one, shall we? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, maybe I'll continue to laugh about it. I, I don't think you will. Next no. time. <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let's uh, get another better look from underneath, and this is what's the wow factor under here. Uh, you can see each uh, suspension hanger has a dual shock system uh, and airbags. So what you do have the, the ability to do with this one is level your trailer like you can with you know the X-Range. Um, so when you pull up to camp, it's a nice easy setup. You get a nice level cam um, camp as well. You'll see uh, up the front there, there's a 120 litre water tank okay, on board. Um, and you can get option in a second one there as well. And they sit nicely un underneath. Um, to be protected uh, from any rocks and stones and things like that. Um, but you can see how well that thing's constructed underneath and why they are so unstoppable. I think the self-leveling airbags, Tommy, we might get to, we might touch on that a little bit later when we, when we get to the deck, hey? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Yep, I was just pointing it out as I saw it in there. Okay. <laughs> All right, fantastic. I think we'll, um, we'll wind up the uh, suspension section there and let's get into the toy hauling section. Let's talk about the deck and what you can actually do, what you can put on top of the, uh, the TH610. All right, I've already touched base on, on what the deck's all about, and I think the fundamental difference is between the 610 and the 730, but what we might do, um, did we actually get a graphic? Have we got a graphic teed up with the different uh, deck sizes there, guys? There we go. Okay, I'm gonna struggle to see that there. Uh, deck size, so the length, let's just talk about that. The length on the TH610, you've got 3.1 metres of usable space in length and 2.4 metres wide. On the TH730, you've got 4.15 uh, metres long. And again, that was um, the decision on those deck sizes was predominantly made around side-by-sides. TH610, two-door side-by-side. TH730, four-door side-by-side. Or different configurations, um, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, your tear weight, like we stated before, uh, 1,500 odd kilos, GBM, 3.4 tonne. You've got almost a payload of two tonne. 
Um, and even if you were to put a four-door side-by-side is weighing in at about 800 odd kilos, um, then you have ample capacity. If you had the two water tank options, you're gonna have roughly 240 odd kilos. Food, gear, and all the rest of it, you'll never get this thing uh, close with what it's intended for um, to its, its total weight. Tom, you got me? I am here. Mate, what we might do, I might start running through on some different setups. While we do that, do you want to quickly show the integrated ramps and get that um, Polaris General off the deck? Yeah, sounds good. So we've got the ramps under here and I'm just going to pull them out. It's been a while since I've done it. <laughs> so down they come. <coughs> Got them, they're nice, nice and foldable, nice and easy, lightweight, so you can open them up really easy, and anyone can do that. <clears throat> open them up here, we line them up to the other side, and Justin, hopefully, that's good, and uh, I don't have any mischief getting it back off. <laughs> um, mate, I would definitely, we probably should have thought about this before, that is a painted concrete floor. Um, be very careful when you reverse up, huh? You don't want to have another boo-boo in one of my Polaris's, do you, Tommy? I definitely don't want to have another boo-boo, uh, but we won't talk about that. I'll just quietly... Her heritage moment. No! So a couple of years ago, I'm going to tell a story, and I don't think people, that, that Tommy's actually going to like this, but look, it happens. Everybody makes mistakes and we learn from our mistakes. I'll paint the picture. It's a Saturday morning and the sales team are in here meant to be selling camper trailers. I get a phone call at home. I wasn't here. It's Tommy. I can hear it in his voice. Something's wrong. Tommy was in a world of hurt and he said, you at home, I need to come and see you. Right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm at home. What's going on? I'm thinking he's about to quit or something. That's, that's, that's what it sounded like. I open the front door. Tommy is all banged up. There is bark missing all the way down his skin. His elbow's blown up like a balloon. I'm like, oh my God, what happened? He goes, I made a mistake, I've rolled your Polaris. I said, what were you doing in the Polaris? So Tommy decided to take the Polaris out of the showroom and do donuts in the car park. Tommy will not be doing that again, will you, Tom? I, I definitely will not be doing that again. I really learned the, the limits you can get a side-by-side uh, -side too. And that's probably a good safety point right there, guys. Uh, and this is not a, an episode about side-by-sides. These things are, are powerful, extremely powerful, and they can be dangerous. So make sure you take precaution when you're using it. Sorry to do that to you, Tom, but I think that's, that's a story. Right. Now everyone knows the story, the secret's out. We're past it. We're, we're, past, we're past it. it. We're well past it. Okay, good. Are you past it? Get that thing off. All right, it'll be coming. And that's how you do that. That's how you do that. <laughs> okay, Tommy, make yourself um, way back over to the deck. I'm gonna bring up some graphics and we're gonna show you some different configurations that you can put on your toy hauler. Uh, let's go into slide one. So this is back from season one of Patriot Games. Again, you can find that on YouTube on the Patriot Games channel. That is my silver TH610. In this configuration, I'm running two quad bikes, two full-size quad bikes from memory. I think we were running a Sportsman 570 and a Polaris 350 and a 3.7 metre boat on the roof, on the boat loader, which we'll run you through a little bit later on. Let's have a look at the next one. Oh, this, this was an awesome weekend. This was an awesome shoot. The kids were really young. Uh, a sea RXP um, and a KDM 450 on the back of, that was actually the same toy hauler, believe it or not. I think that was before we put the uh, boat loader on it. And that's with one of my original Super Tourers. That is actually Super Tourer number one. That's the first Super Tourer that I ever built. Uh, one day I'll get it back. So if you're watching and you own that car right now, please contact um, the team here at Patriot Campers because I want it back. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, so this was the first 730 that I ever built. Now we were leaving on that trip uh, for Cape York for that big, um, that big trip up there and a good buddy of mine, Joe, who came on the trip with us, he needed more deck space. Um, and at that time I started playing around with four doors and this is where we came up with the concept of the 730. In this configuration, he's running a Polaris uh, Ranger three-seater, which is a big two-door side-by-side. 
and he's also running a quad bike on the front of that and an outboard motor in between. So that's, that's another setup. Let's have a look at the next one. This one here was amazingly interesting. Uh, Clay and his team from Expedition Overland in the United States. Again, guys, jump onto their YouTube channel. Uh, their content is absolutely amazing, and especially for the Australian audience. It's something a, a little bit different to, to the content that you see here in Australia. They just learnt to fly powered paragliders, and they took their toy hauler on a trip down into Mexico, uh, where they did their final training, and that, that's three powered uh, paragliders on the back of that toy hauler. Let's have a look at the next one. Uh, this was a trip to, where was this? This was a station in Northern South Australia. Um, we went on a trip down there. That's your typical sort of 50 inch wide side by side. So that's one of the original, um, the original sort of styles of side by sides. They're getting a little bit bigger than that now. Um, with the Sherco 350, I think uh, we had at that stage. Um, and you can see the different tank configurations as we go as well. Have we, do we have any more or is that it? Okay, so this is, this is another setup. This one's got a boat loader, 3.7 metre boat on top, uh, Polaris 350, it looks like there's a KDM 350 on the other side, and a KDM 50 or 65 it might be, uh, sitting at the front. That was one of the photo shoots that we did um, for one of the product videos, actually, for the X1, I think it was, a couple of years back. Uh, any more? And that's just the ultimate, there's, that's the dream right there. Uh, that was my dream, which I made a reality. Uh, the Mega 6 with the kids' little Razor 170 on the back, two quad bikes, outboard motor, boat on top. That right there, that is a good time. That looks like a good time and I can guarantee you that that is a good time. Again, you can watch that there in season two of Patriot Games if you want to see that whole program, Race of Ram 2500 with another toy hauler on the back. Um, Tom. Yeah, there's some great setups there and the Mega 6 and the 610, mate, you're right. It's a dream come true. That's, that's where it's at, eh? Yeah, that's where it's at. That, was, that is the ultimate touring package for anybody, I reckon. Doesn't get much better than that. No. Let's have a run through <coughs> the deck, mate. Let's show us the features of the deck. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we'll run through. We'll start at the front here um, of what the sort of deck has to offer. Now, we had the, uh, the general on today, so um, you've got two ATV cradles there that uh, are an option. Okay, but standard, it comes with eight uh, tie-down cleats, which you can see here. Now, the best bit about this deck is that you can actually adjust all these tie-down points. So no matter what you're taking, what you think you're taking, um, you can strap them down safely, securely, but adjust them as your trip goes on. Let's uh, just come back to that bolt for a second, mate, because it's a feature that we probably should have had a ratchet for. That bolt there, there's a little cam underneath that bolt, so it's a 13mm socket or spanner. Give that half a turn out, you can slide that eye bolt, spin it around 360. Let's go a little bit wider on that camera there, guys. Um, you can slide it through any of those channels. Those channels are not just through the aluminium deck, they're actually back into the main chassis frame. Uh, load point rating, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but you will break a strap before you bend one of those toe hooks, or one of those tie down hooks. Thanks, Justin. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, we, we probably should have had something there. But it's so easy to strap everything down. For these, it's just one strap over the top uh, and that, that's done there. Now we also option a free dirt bike uh, rack holder. So you can have three bikes across the, uh, the, the deck there, um, which means you can sort of take the family with you, your friends uh, and all that sort of stuff, which is really cool. But size wise, um, you'd definitely be able to get uh, another one on the back as well um, with those bikes. Now. You've got an ATV winch, which is an option as well. It's a 4,000 pound ATV winch. So if you need to winch um, your buggy back, if you sort of have a bit of a mischief, uh, then you can, you can get it back home, get it fixed. Um, but really, really handy piece of kit um, to have on board um, when you're using these side-by-sides. Uh, and the winch, uh, sorry guys, the winch actually doubles there. That is your mechanism for the boat loader as well. So if you're running side by sides, uh, you can use it exactly like Tommy said, or if you run a boat loader, that is the mechanism um, that, that routes around the boat loader and that's what actually pulls the boat up, which we'll get to in a second. And that's why there's two of us doing it, because when one forgets, the other picks it up. That's it. <laughs> Uh, so then also on this one, this one's optioned with an outboard motor holder and this will hold up to a 20 horsepower um, outboard motor. So if you are running the boat loader as well, um, that's going to team up a really handy um, piece of kit to have for storage of the outboard motor. Um, so this one here is optioned, so um, when they've got the, um, the boat on the car, you can carry your motor as well. 
Um, but there's plenty of sort of options to move this to different spaces as you need on the deck um, to suit your setup as well. If we sort of watch yourself, cameraman, around here. There's also another accessories tow hitch. If you want to take some push bikes with you, you can. Um, so that's, that's a really another handy point. So look, as you can see, that you can just start taking the whole lot. And the boat loader's not limited to a boat. You know, you can put kayaks up there. Um, you could use it for storage boxes and that sort of stuff as well. So That's kind of actually, sorry Tom to interrupt you again, mate, but that, that is a really, really valid point with the boat loader. When we go uh, racing um, and we take a toy hauler out with us, obviously we don't take a boat with us when we go racing, we use it as a platform to look at the racetrack. So we'll set up a couple of chairs up there on top. The kids before have slept on top of that boat loader um, with swag, sorry, not the kids, mates of mine have slept up on the boat loader. I don't want to say that and put myself in the... You know, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've slept up there in their swags. Great vantage point if you're on the beach, but so many uses for that boat loader. It's 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 not even funny. Exactly right. So it's really you know whether if you're taking bikes and you and you're not having a buggy, it's almost a, a, a must uh, for extra storage. Now this one here has been optioned with a second spare wheel on the deck. Okay, so standard. Before I showed you the little space saver underneath. Well, you get a full size. You can get a full size on the deck uh, if you want to. Uh, again, that can be positioned where, where you like, um, but really handy if you're doing those big touring trips and you are a little bit cautious on uh, taking a second um, a second tyre. Um, Tommy, I'm going I'm to have to jump in there, mate. I just um, I just got the the look that we are doing it again. We are well over we time rambling. right now. Um, let me just quickly run through the boat loader. What I might do, I'll show you a video on the boat loader and how that boat loader works and then I'll quickly explain it to you. Let's roll the boat loader. So you can see that that quicker, the, the boat loader is pretty self-explanatory. Specs on the boat loader, um, look, it's really, the length is, is really, it really comes down to what you want to carry on it. You're really restricted by the beam of the boat. You can only go to a maximum of 1.65 metres wide, which usually dictates the length of up to about 3.9 metres. I found uh, in all my travels, 3.5 to 3.7 metre uh, rooftop tinnies, or even bigger, you can, up to 150 kilos, you can put on that boat loader. Um, a 3.5 to 3.7 gives you the optimum length because if it overhangs the rooftop tent on the front of the boat, you've got to push the boat back every time you want to open the rooftop tent. So that would be uh, my recommendation, but talk to your dealer uh, about the spec on what you can load on there. I think lastly, when it comes to, to, to toy hauling, uh, I'll go back to Tommy, let's touch on the specialised storage compartment that has been designed into the, into the toy hauler models, specifically to carry that gear that you need to take with you when you're taking all your toys. Thanks Justin, yeah absolutely and, and look there's, there's plenty of storage in this front bit you know. Um, if we open up this side here and we're going to turn some lights on inside, there's so much storage in there um, for having all your gear, uh, keeping your motorbike gear, any, any stuff like that, you know dust and waterproof. Um, inside here we've also got a 350 watt inverter um, so you can charge all your head torches and things like that. Um, but a really, really decent side. It's all carpeted as well, um, so it's going to protect anything when it rolls around. Um, a massive storage on all of this, all of these compartments, and not forgetting the big wet storage up the top as well um, for you know that sort of wet, you know, wet storage type stuff um, that you don't mind getting wet or muddy. But even for me, mate, look, I suppose that storage. Mate, let's, let's flick back to Tommy for a sec. Open that drawer underneath the, um, the storage compartment there. 
Look, specifically, um, I won't bring up another heritage moment, but I'll tell you what, what really made sense to me when we were going through the design process with the toy haulers. When you're carrying toys with you, the amount of gear and tools that goes with you on every trip is amazing. Because let's face it, if you're anything like me, um, when you take the toys out, you break stuff. Um, and you, you spend a lot of time fixing stuff. But that's all part and parcel of why you take toys with you. So in that drawer there that you can see specifically, I will fill that with spare parts and tools. Um, say if it's plug kits, air compressors, um, belts, wh whatever you need for your particular toys. The top storage box was specifically designed to be able to take a full size gear bag, motocross gear. Anybody who's into riding or side by sides, by the time you get all your gear together, your boots and your helmet, and you put that in the gear bag, again, it's one of those things you've never got anywhere to put it. So I can comfortably fit in there mine and the twins gear bags um, and they're, they're safe, secure, they can be locked up and they're not out in the weather. Tommy, I'm gonna have to cut that off there, mate. Um, I think we're, not I think, we're gonna have to move around to the next section. Why don't you get set up at the kitchen and I'll quickly run uh, through these, uh, through some features of the kitchen. Sounds good. All right, can I just say publicly right now to the producer or producers of this show, you gave me four minutes to do that toy hauling section. There was no way we were gonna get, get through that in, in four minutes, were we, Tommy? We're definitely not, mate. I mean, and it's the same with everything. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, so when I walk into work tomorrow morning and everybody gives the standard, oh, Justin, talk too much again, this one was not my fault. Tommy, do you agree? I absolutely agree, mate. That's our story and we're sticking to it. We'll, we'll stick to it together. Kitchen, I'm going to let you do this on your own. I won't even interrupt. Go. Okay, perfect. No, I'm just joking. All right, so uh, we'll start off um, the front box here where we're going to pull out the, um, the fridge slide there. Now, this one here's got a 60 litre dual zone Evercool there. Uh, you've got hot and cold water to the sink. Uh, you've got plate storage, you've got wet sponge storage, you've got cutlery storage. So you're giving you the same fundamentals of the X-Range, that same great kitchen, Rymax bench top. And then over here, you've got access uh, to more pantry storage, um, bench space, um, so you can do your chopping on. But more importantly, and you'll look at this, and there's no sort of two burner stove in this one. Um, now what we would normally do is get a portable stove, um, and place it here on the wheel arch and then do your cooking that way, okay? That way, um, you know, you, you've got, you know, keeping the storage on the, on the toy hauler so you get all your toys on there, um, but you're also utilising this as another bench space. Um, so that's a really great, great point. There's, there's plenty of bench space uh, for a kitchen so you can still cook up for a large family. Um, inside here, um, you've got your battery management, 1230, okay? Uh, and then all your lighting systems here um, with accessories, your water pump for your sink and your shower, and obviously fridge power as well. See so there, you've got your water level gauge, um, and also you've got your can option for a second water tank as well on this, so you can get up to 240 litres of water, um, which is massive uh, for those big trips. Um, but also standard is a fusion stereo system, uh, and you'll see the speakers out the back on the headboard. Um, they're awesome bit of camp, camp music when you're, uh, when you're travelling. Now, the toy hauler still has 240 input, it still has charging off the tow vehicle and it still has solar input as well. Okay, so you're still going to keep those batteries topped up uh, when you're travelling and they come with two 150 amp hour gel batteries you can upgrade to lithium as well. Um, now, look, one of the, the, the most important parts is the, the airbag suspension. That's where you've got your little control unit here. Now I probably could have done this before I dropped the, uh, dropped the Ranger off, the General, sorry. Um, but basically nice and easy, you can just drop that. If you have a look here, cameraman, that would just lower down. So it's at a nice usable height. But this is also self-leveling, so if we're on uneven ground, it's just a case of hitting two, hitting two switches there and it will find its its way to a level ground, which is a really, really cool feature, um, and I love it. Another great thing about this is it has an inbuilt air tank on it. So, 
if we open up this drawer here and we have a look here, you've got an air outlet uh, and it comes with sort of your standard compressor gauges and things like that. So you can pump up your tyres really easy using that tank. Um, another great place for food storage, dry food storage, but we supply you with pretty much everything. Um, hoses, straps, um, there's your winch remote there. Um, pressurised uh, water filler caps and we also um, supply you with the DA35 pin as well. A lot of people ask, you know, where do I get the pin from? Well, we supply them with our trailers when you buy them brand new um, as well. But this is all lockable so you don't have anyone sort of stealing your, your gear out of there and, and the ones on the other side are lockable as well. If Perfect, I Tommy. Mate, um, you're going to you're gonna head to the front box? Yeah, just heading to the front box there. I wanted just to show in just, here. Just while you do that, before you open that up, I might just touch base on the, um, the self-levelling airbags. The purpose of the self-levelling airbag, or the main functionality in the toy hauler of the self-levelling airbags, is that it will find its own level irrelevant of the load that you have on the trailer. And that's the reason that we implemented that system into the toy hauler. So if you're unloaded or you're fully loaded, all you need to do is flick those two switches, like Tommy said before, the, the trailer will automatically find the predetermined preset ride height that we set here at the factory at Patriot Campers. Um, one question that I still get asked a lot at trade shows or out in public, how reliable is the airbag system um, in a Patriot Camper? Well, the toy hauler really uh, proves the point. We only use products from Airbag Man um, here in Australia, uh, a company that's uh, very close to the Patriot factory. They're only an hour north uh, in Brisbane, another uh, fantastic family-run uh, business. Um, the bags, the products, the gauges, the lines, the air tanks, everything that we put into that, I can honestly say hand on heart, I've never ever replaced an airbag um, in, in the history of my towing, whether it's an X1 or a TH610. But that is predominantly um, the main feature for the, the airbags in the toy hauler. That and as well what Tommy just ran you through, which is the ability to dump the deck for easy loading and unloading and obviously self-leveling at campsite being such a big trailer. Thanks mate. Do you remember when we hit that creek at, uh, up in the Cape? Yes. That Whoa. Was, that was big. So, heritage moment. Yes. <laughs> This is Tommy's heritage moment, back to him. That's right, okay, so we were heading back from the station, I think, and we we're going down the road. We'd, we'd done it a couple of times, trying to find a spot, and I think all I hear on the radio is just in like, slow down, slow down. And with that, he's gone through a creek. Jeez, what were you, how fast were you going? I think we were doing about 80 or 90K. And the thing shot through this creek. When I came through with the little 470, like it's through the whole Hilux, and, uh, the mule, as it were, back in the day, heritage. Uh, yeah, it just threw us basically off the track. And we got to the side of the road and Justin's like, well, we've definitely broken something. And, and with that, he pretty much hit the switch, filled the airbags up and off we went. It was, it was What incredible. actually happened and what technically happened is when we bottomed out and we hit, we hit the washout that hard, it compressed all four airbags, blew the overpressure valve in the, in the tank, in the holding tank underneath the chassis, but the most remarkable thing was it didn't blow a line, it didn't blow an airbag, it didn't blow the welding seams on the tank. It blew the overpressure valve straight out of the thread on the bottom of the tank. Um, and that, to me, that was it. I was done, sold airbags <laughs> on anything, no dramas. Yeah, it was pretty incredible, mate, to see. Mm. Anyway, back to, back to the kitchen. Back to me, back to We're the back kitchen. We're back over so, time now. I mean, you can get lost in airbags, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, open this up, the front going box. Um, look, again, utility shelf. Now, it's all carpeted inside. Um, so you've got a utility shelf there for straps and hoses and tools and things. Uh, and then you've got two, um, you can go a spot for two 20 litre jerry cans if you want to. Um, these don't come with diesel hot water system, they come with a standard gas hot water system uh, on there. Um, and then you've got your barbecue as well that you can just slide out for easy cookings, nice little breakfast runs when you get to the Northern Territory uh, as well. So really, really handy, another great addition to your kitchen. So um, yeah, fantastic. Tommy, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting some, some really bad vibes coming through. No, yeah, here on my screen, like, <laughs> when they start doing this, it means we gotta go. Shut Tommy, thank you very much for running us all through <laughs> that, guys. We're gonna have a quick three and a half minute break. We're going to go to the, the, the trailer I hate saying that, it sounds like a pun. 
We're going to go and we're going to show you a clip from season three of Patriot Games. Um, this is really the heart of Patriot Campers and everything that happens here, touring with our products, proving our products, learning, improving, testing, ensuring that our customers get the what's on the box that we tell them and more importantly, doing it with our family. So give us a couple of minutes, we'll have a bottle of water, check this out, season three of Patriot Games. Welcome back. Um, Patriot Games, if you haven't seen it, uh, get on it, Patriot Games YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel, uh, keep an eye out. We're about to wind up season three, but very shortly we're gonna head, up, uh, head out filming at season four. Um, but we do have some special episodes coming, so keep an eye out on that YouTube channel. Um, now let's get into it, let's get to my favorite part of the show. Everybody knows this is my favorite part of the show. With the honest and genuine, Classy and ambitious, queen of our campsite, Patriot Supply with Sarah. How you doing, bud? Good, how are you? Hi, guys. Good, where's, um, what's going on? You're not in, not in the warehouse tonight? No, it's a little bit different tonight. We've got something special. It's something exciting happening tonight. Something very exciting. What, what are you running us through tonight? What are the products that you have um, created for Patriot okay. Supply this week? 
So we've done something a little bit different and the toy hauler was out and how good does that look as a catwalk? What do you think? Mm, I'm, I'm feeling mm. what you're putting there. I know, you think I'm putting all your toys on there, but no, no, no. Patriots. So this, this is where a female perspective comes into all yes. of the designs here at Patriot Campus. Sarah is as responsible for all of the designs here in functionality as the engineering team is. And I think Sarah's come up with an ingenious idea. So let's, let's, let's do it. So we are so lucky that um, our crew at Patriot have jumped on board and we're gonna do a Patriot apparel fashion show. Now all of this can be purchased on patriotsupply.com.au. We don't have the whole range, but um, let's take you through some of our cool merchandise. Key the music. I'm too sexy for my love, too sexy for my love. First love. up, we have Dave. Dave, we call him Spanners, and he is rocking the Get Lost long sleeve tee and Patriot Campus grey cap. Thanks, Dave. Next up, we have Hannah. Hannah, she's looking great in her vintage star woman's tee, and she's also got the hoodie to match. Thank you, Hannah. Michael is up next, looking the part. He's our blue fishing shirt and also a grey Patriot cap. Go, Michael. Christian is up next. So he is wearing our Dig It tee that ranges in sizes 2 to 16. Look at the man right there. Work it, Christian. Up next. Is Jack. Now this is our engineering mastermind wearing our Huntsman tee and Patriot Games black cap. Thanks Jack. Give it up for Courtney. Courtney is rocking our ladies hatchet singlet. Working it Courtney. Now Steve is up next. You guys may know him from such films as the Mega Six Build, Super Ram Build, and my favourite, the 1500 Hemi Build. Work it, looking good in the Get Lost hoodie. Ashton is up now, and Ashton has got our classic star sleeve on. This is one of our best sellers, guys. Good job, Ash. Now we have Brad. He is ready for anything, ready for that campfire. He has got on our Patriot flannelette and beanie. He's ready for any occasion and perfect for winter. Now, Action Woman. We've got Mia herself. Yeah, and girl. She, yeah, she, girl. She's rocking the unisex adventure await tee. Work it. And now we have, we've got Dave again. He just can't get away. He's loving it. He is wearing the unstoppable tee, the black truck, with the matching camo hoodie. This is a classic, this one. Now we have Michael. Michael. He loves his Ram. And now he can wear a Super Ram every day. Thank you, Michael. Now you can wear the tee. Christian, sun's out, guns out. Yeah, look Woo! The guns. Here's Christian in the hatchet muscle tee. Oh, looking good. He's mine, I made him. Up next, Steve again. We got Steve with his beard in the mud, sweat and beards tee. He's also got a stubby cooler, also sold, Patriot Supply. Looking great, Steve. Now we have Hannah. Woo! She is looking amazing in her unisex camo tee. Built for the runway, that one. And last but not least, we have Courtney to wrap the show. Courtney is wearing the pink hatchet muscle tee. Good job, Courtney. And that's a wrap. All of these um, apparel, the whole apparel line can be brought on patriotsupply.com.au and I'm losing my voice. <laughs>
What do you think, babe? I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm lost for words. That, I that know was everybody cool, thinks though. that that doesn't happen, but I am lost for words. Round of applause like to the team. Good job, guys. At Patriot Campers now, if that doesn't prove what the culture is like here at Patriot Campers, I don't know what will. Every single one of those people that you just saw there are all the boys and girls behind the scenes that make this brand what it is. And they're not scared to get up there and shake their asses for their job. And that, I love. Babe, you, you're amazing. Round of applause to Sarah. That was amazing. <laughs> Patriotsupply.com.au Make sure you get on there, guys. There is, a, there is a huge range. Sarah puts so much work, so much effort into the range of apparel uh, that we put out there. You can see the Patriot Supply shirt that I'm wearing right now. I would have to say right now, babe, you still down there? Yeah, I'm yep, here. Yeah, we got her. Yeah. Um, the red flanny, the new red, is Brad's, bring Brad in. Bring him back in for a sec. Bring I the lumberjack. I literally jack. cannot keep them. They sell out all the time. Brad, back up, There he is, up. get him in here. This right here, so I'm actually going to take the credit for this design. Is that okay, babe? Yeah, if you want. The, the, <laughs> whatever. The red flanny is, has always been a red staple for me. It is. Uh, you'll notice throughout the years of Patriot Games, uh, Sarah surprised me with the Patriot Campers Edition red flanny. Uh, the quality of that thing there, Beautiful. my mates have been rocking Made them. in Europe. I've had the, prot the prototype on that there for must be seven, eight months. Well, yeah, for so long and yeah. everyone asked for it, so and, we brought yeah, it out. That's, that's got to be my favourite. That's not a plug for the Red Flanny, that's just my favourite. Anyway, oh, sure. babe, thank you very much. Thanks, yeah? guys. Well done. Continue. Um, okay, we'll give these guys a couple of minutes to set that showroom back up uh, there now. Um, we're going to roll into the accommodation section. <coughs> Oh, I'm just watching the comments come in on YouTube. That's so cool. So, so cool. Uh, can't wait to read those comments later on. Now, the accommodation. What we're not going to do tonight is we're not going to run you through. Um, when we get back to uh, Tommy in a minute, once he's all set up, and keep an eye on him down there. He's running the Sky Camp for iCamper on this one here for this um, particular show. But what I might do before we do cross back over to him, let's show the images of the different options that we supply here at Patriot Campers. Now it needs to be said, you can put on any style of rooftop tent that your heart desires when it comes to a toy hauler. These are our preferences and this is what we offer from the factory. iCamp a Sky Camp 4, you can see that up there now. Um, really amazing bit of kit. Uh, iCamper have come a very, very, very long way um, in the years that they've been around. This is actually a four person tent. Um, you, I don't know a lot of people that, that buy a tent for four for, for people. Um, you can get a second, a drop down room, heaps of accessories for it. That would be my choice at this point in time for a toy hauler. Let's have a look at the next. Uh, so that graphic is not actually matching. That one that's uh, showing there now, that is the iCamper um, X cover, not the Darchi Highview 1800. We've got a bit of a technical glitch here. But that one there, Tommy's explained it very well in the X1N video. This is your traditional sort of style rooftop tent with a twist that it has a hard top with a set of roof racks. So you can put mountain bikes, kayaks, and those types of things on top, worth looking at. Let's go to the next. Uh, this one that you see here now, that is the Darchi Highview 1800. I suppose, look, I don't like to say entry level, but compared to the other tents that I've just showed you, um, that they are very, very cost effective, very high quality from Darchi. Uh, if you watch Patriot Games, you know that we run Darchi gear on all of our stuff. Conventional soft top uh, rooftop tent. Uh, and the next one would be the staple item for me. Uh, again, I think my preference at this point in time is the eye camper, but the James Baroud Evasion, um, I still will have an Evasion that's six or seven years old personally, and it's still in amazing condition. Um, European made quality is unbelievable, um, but they are a little bit smaller, more suited to uh, a younger couple or a, a single person. Is that it for, that's it for the images on what we supply. Tommy, I can see you down there now, mate. Hello. How was that fashion show? Mate, the fashion show was brilliant. You know, I was itching to get on there. Oh, I can't believe you didn't get up there. I was it? so, I was itching, and, but I thought, you know, enough of seeing me walk around. Okay, uh, I'm not going to have the time with the lag with the comments, but um, 
Can we pull back wide and just get Tommy? Just just give us one little uh, strike, Tom. Really? All oh, right, I will. Come on, let's okay, go I'll wide. Pull I'm it back. Doing the full thing. All right. Pull I'm, it back. I want to see the full thing. Can I'll we do get the full thing? Can we get music or will we pass that cue? Cue, uh, cue music. Uh, hang on, I think we can just, yep, they're giving me the nod, so just hold on one sec, we can get music going for you. Here it is. Let's do it. <laughs> hey guys, to own one of these t-shirts, <laughs> you've got to put your resume into Patriot Campus, all right? <laughs> that, okay. Is that you good? <laughs> You've been itching the whole time to do that, so, haven't you? I had so many more moves. I was gonna oh, do the let's work. get back to the accommodation. <laughs> um, mate, is there anything, anything I've missed there that you'd like to add? Not really at all. You, you've covered it uh, really well. And, and look, the, the iCamp SkyCamp 4 is great on there. Uh, but also, look, you don't have to have a tent at all. You know, if you decide not to go that and you want to put a rack on top, so much like the X1N, you can carry swags if there's a big, big group of you, uh, you can do that. So the storage-wise on top, uh, is really, really handy. Um, okay. But yeah, Juzzy, you, you covered all of it, mate. Okay, um, look, it's, it's worthwhile noting you've got two crossbars on top of that basket there. Um, so you, re you really can mount absolutely anything that you like. Um, you, know what I've, you know what I've actually missed? I think I've I know. I've missed the awning, haven't I? I did, I was looking at it, and I'm thinking we haven't spoken about the awning yet. Mate, I know, I know we've rolled up a clip before, so in the interest of saving time, once again, let's roll the clip on the awning set up from your uh, showroom walk around. Yep. All right, so what you want to do, undo these straps. They just hold it all in. Ah, Michael, just in time, mate. Just in time, yeah. Hold those poles. So as the awning comes out, You want to sort of make, can you just hold this up here like this? I'm just going to grab those poles underneath. So just hold it nice and high. Now you've got a couple of different poles. All right. And what you will notice is, is on the deck, you've got these two thumb sort of screws there. So what we'll do, hold that there. We're going to undo them. Okay. I probably should have undone these first. Might have been a bit quicker. All right, so you're going to start putting those um, those thumb nuts in. Put this over the top there. That's perfect. Do that, and then thank you, Michael, for holding that up. <clears throat> like so, with your legs. You're done. Then you can, what you can do is come here and just strap the awning in. All right. All right, Tom. We're going to have to finish that section up there, mate. Um, I think you can stay where you are for the next section. Okay. Um, let's let's just uh, you've, we've shown the whole thing. So let's just talk about uh, the services. <coughs> Right, when it comes to the services in the TH610, it has fundamentally everything uh, possibly that you need. Uh, Tommy, I've just seen a comment um, come through that I think is worth uh, noting while we, we just rolled that intro. Yeah. This is from OzDM on YouTube. Yeah. Whatever that piece of meat you call Tommy is selling, I'm buying. <laughs> is that what they really <laughs> write? <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that for a comment? There you go. <laughs> I mean, I've cool, Oz, Oz DM. Um, get Tommy through what? Tinder? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sales at patriotcampus.com.au. Okay, get, get, get on to him there. That is awesome. Okay, let's, let's quickly talk about power. Um, Tommy, run us through the power system in the TH610, standard. Absolutely, and we spoke about it before, but it's a, it's a Red Arc uh, BMS 1230 running off two 150 amp hour gel batteries that you can upgrade to lithium. Uh, and then you've also got the ability to have an inverter on board, uh, as shown before. But you've got solar input, um, 240 charging, and charging off the drawbar as well. Uh, teamed up with that, though, is you've got the utility lights off the side. You've got one on the deck so you can see what you're doing. 
um, you know, uh, late at night or unloading or loading uh, and one off the other side so you can see exactly uh, what your campsite is doing. Um, another really good point while I'm here, sorry Justin, I know I've kind of missed the, uh, shot the gun a little bit there, but uh, you've also got a high lift jack holder here uh, and room for Max Trax mounts on the back here as well. Um, what do you think? Yeah, Tommy, I'm, I'm losing your audio there, mate. You got me? Oh, you, you're losing me? Yeah, no, no, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha back. Okay. Um, so the last one there was, sorry, the Max Trax holders and the high lift jack holder. That's correct, yeah. Okay, um, we've got LED lights all around um, the board, uh, all around the headboard. Electric water pump, water we've already discussed, mate. I think, um, mate, again, we are well over time. Let's move it into the Q&A section, mate. Thank you very much. We're gonna go to a short break. We're gonna show the Patriot Games competition giveaway at this point in time while you make your way back up into the newsroom, the newsroom, um, for the, the Q&A. Newsroom. So I'll see you in a minute, mate. I'll see you in a bit. To celebrate Season 3 of Patriot Games, we're giving you the chance to win the ultimate family touring package worth over $150,000. Enter now to get your hands on a brand new Isuzu D-Max kitted out to handle a Patriot Games adventure using the gear we know and trust. And if that's not enough, you'll also receive a Patriot Campus X2 to tow behind it. Plus, receive a brand new Polaris Ranger for the kids and loads of camping gear. Entries close June 30, 2020. Enter online now at patriotgames.tv. All right, welcome back. Um, let's get let's get straight into the Q and A. We chewed up a bit of time here last week, so let's um let's see what we can do to get uh, through this. Um, can you still have the boat rack with a side by side? No, you cannot have a boat rack with the side by side. The, the height um, just doesn't allow it. So that's as easy as that, I suppose. <laughs> Pretty easy. Uh, could you rig it up to load a jet ski? <sighs> oh, I mean, look, we we showed a picture of it. Yep. We do, we do have a jet ski loader that we developed um, for the TH610. Um, it's been a while since we've had the request for a jet ski. They're probably not as suited to a jet ski as a jet ski trailer would be. I would hate to see somebody dipping something of this sort of value into the ocean time and time again, especially if you're on a remote uh, trip. Mm. Um, answers yes. Definitely can be done. Contact uh, your sales team. Uh, can you put a boat on the deck of a TH610 or 730? If a dimension length fits, no dramas, go for it. Why not uh, disc brakes? Look, honestly, uh, when it comes to disc brakes, uh, it's bang for your buck for us when it comes to trailers. Disc brake systems are very, very expensive on trailers. We found over the years that customers don't see the value in disc brakes. That is so subjective and not a statement that I'm making. It's just the feedback that we've had from the customers. Um, when you get into electric over hydraulic brakes and you start talking, you know, pumps and systems and discs and pads and rotors and all those sorts of things, they do get quite expensive uh, quite quickly. The drum brakes that we fit on all of our trailers are a full off-road uh, brake, the way the magnets are set up in them. We have very minimal uh, uh, issues with them when it comes to service, servicing failures and warranty. Go on, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's all right, that's what I was gonna Can say. Can be done, have done it before in the past. If you particularly want disc brakes on a toy hauler, again, talk to your salesperson. It can definitely be uh, done, but uh, make sure you're sitting down when you get the price. <laughs> <laughs> is, and not from us, from the suppliers. Yeah. The parts are expensive. Um, is it possible to still get a TH47? <sighs> Look, it's, uh, it, it's a request that we're not, not actively advertising them, but you know, if you do want one, give me a call uh, and we'll see if we can put one in the production line. We still have all the jigs for them. Uh, the TH7, the, the TH470, um, commercially, it wasn't a, a very highly, um, what's the word I'm using? It wasn't, there wasn't much demand for it. There wasn't a, a big demand for it. That's exactly the word for it. So we kind of, uh, we stopped marketing it, but we still have the ability to build it. Um, can the TH730 take a two door side by side and a quad bike? Yes, yes it can. As you would have seen, uh, in, if you want, go back through the video, uh, there's a, one where we've got a white TH730 with a Polaris Ranger three-seater. Yep. And a Honda 500. 500 yeah, so a yep. big, and still plenty of room to go. Tons, and still tons of room on it. So the answer to that one's definitely yes. 
Are we ever going to get a detailed look at that Polaris race car? Yes, guys, apologise, get asked that a lot. Haven't had the time. Um, we've, got, we've got some other things going on when it comes to Patriot Racing at the moment that we're, that we're putting some concentration into. It's, it'll be worth it when it comes. Um, can the TAT 7.30 take a two-door... Sorry, I'll skip that one. Have you ever fit an X-Series trailer on top of a toy hauler? No, we've never done that. Never had the need to do it. Um, weight distribution, I wouldn't want to do it unless I had to do it, to be perfectly honest with you. Can the TH610 be a car trailer? Do you want to answer this one or? You answer this one, I think. Yes, definitely. So we're getting more and more requests for flat deck uh, THs. We here at Patriot HQ, we have a TH730 that we use as a car transporter and we, and we use it quite regularly mm. um, to cart Polaris's around, Land Cruisers, if you look on our Instagram post actually just this week, we had a 79 series on the back. We do have another variation, I'm going to throw a spanner in the works here, we do have another variation called a TT 730, which is a trophy truck 730. Uh, we designed this specifically for Toby Price uh, to haul his uh, trophy truck. Um, that is a product we haven't marketed yet, but it exists. Fundamentally, it's a flat deck TH 730 with the front desk uh, box off a TH 470. Isn't That's it? it, yeah, yeah. A really, really, really cool piece of kit. Really cool piece of kit, and again, unbreakable. Is the boat load up removable if you don't want it for a certain trick? Look, sure, I say yes, it is, but it's a, a fair bit involved. Job. Yeah, a fair bit involved, guys. So it's it's not so you'd you'd want to really think about the trip. It's <laughs> probably look. If I had to put a timeline on it, it's probably. Two cartons of beer and two mates to take it off, yeah. and probably about the same to put it back on. So if you equate that into you know, normal people time, it's probably a day to take it off and a day to put it back on. So yes, but def definitely possible. Um, are the speakers waterproof? Yes, they are. It's a Fusion uh, outdoor speaker, marine speaker. Uh, so yes, they are. Can you option in a fuel tank for refueling to uh, toys? I'll answer this because I know exactly what you get you're getting at. In the early days. Yes, we used to do it. Uh, I was on a trip, had one of those midnight epiphanies when I woke up in the middle of the night and thought, my kids are sleeping on 120 litres of unleaded right now. So I, that was the last one that we ever built. Uh, from a safety perspective, um, I would not like to, uh, I wouldn't want that on my conscience of people camping, doing the wrong thing, not earth staking their fuel tanks, having a leak, something splits, kids asleep, all the rest of it. Um, you can do it after market if you want, but Patriot Campers uh, won't do it again. Um, and no, we didn't have any issues or any failures. <laughs> it was more a what if situation. Um, can you put a CS3 soft top tent onto a toy hauler? If yes, can you attach the kit to uh, Guys, no. Uh, so the CS3 tent is designed specifically for the X, uh, the X1. Um, and the main reason is due to the, the wet box on the toy hauler. So it's a completely redesigned. Uh, so it's not something we're looking at in, at the moment. Correct. What are the pipes along the wheel arches for? So they're going to give you um, better structure and integrity on those wheel arches when loading um, quad bikes and things from the side. So you put your ramps, they can hook over and they're not going to come off as well. Cool. Um, there's a centre hole under the kitchen on the chassis, what's that, what, what is that for? Very, very, very attentive Ooh. right there. Um, I was actually gonna bring that up when you were under there. Um, so that little hole that you see on the bash plate, that's where the air tank sits, and the overpressure valve sits underneath that bash plate. Are we talking about the same nope. hole? <laughs> no, get, oh, look, if they're talking about that hole there in particular, that hole there is for the tool to lower your spare. Yeah. Um, the one that I'm talking about, I don't know, can we get the camera back under on that bash guard? Forward, go towards the drawbar, there you go. See that bit of pipe that you can see there? So that's it there, that's the shroud for the overpressure valve. And when I said before, when we blew the, the airbags out, that's where the overpressure valve uh, came out of, came out of that hole in there. Um, what's the tow bar hitch rated to? There is no rating on the tow bar hitch. The tow bar hitch is specifically for accessories and accessories only like push bike holders and all the rest of it. There's rated recovery points um, at the rear. Can you get it road legal in Norway, Europe? You know, we've actually got someone from Switzerland. Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. who's, uh, I think it must be on almost there. It should now. have arrived by now. It left, left Patriot HQ about three, three to four weeks ago, so it'd be close. Yeah, it'd be close. So look, uh, look, we'll see what happens when he gets it there, but, uh, and, uh, and look, something to ring up 
uh, later date and I'll be able to let you know. Yeah, we sold that one as, as an Australian complied uh, trailer, so it's going to be up to that customer uh, to go through the compliance and ensure that it meets uh, their design rules uh, for the EU. Um, but again, like Tommy said, um, we can fill you into that in probably not, not too distant future. Mm. Can a Hilux tow this toy hauler at its, ma at its max weight? Yes, 100%. So your max weight on the toy hauler is 3.4 tonne. On a Hilux, you've got three and a half tonne uh, towing capacity. Um, so yeah, no, no dramas. As long as you've got a three and a half tonne plus towing capacity uh, vehicle, 100% go for it. Um, I see caravans getting around here, you know, around up and down behind Hyundai Santa Fe's that are you know, completely <laughs> yeah. overloaded and, you know, so, yeah, no problems. Make sure you stay within the, the limits, guys. Keep everybody on the road safe. Is there a limit to the size of the boat motors uh, the boat mount will hold? Yeah, so 20, 20 horsepower, uh, four strokes, kind of the limit uh, is what we go for. And, and I believe it's a short shaft that we run, is that correct? Correct, so we've got two different styles of boat loader. Um, one you would have seen on the images if you go back uh, through, we have a slide uh, side, so your motor lays horizontally there for your bigger motors. Um, what I've found from personal experience, up to a 25 horsepower two stroke, will go onto the one, that, the mount that you saw before and a 20 horsepower four stroke in a short shaft. So I run a 15, I've got two 15 Avonrood uh, four strokes and then I've got a 25 Yamaha and they both go on there, uh, no problems. I will give you a tip though, so that height is adjustable that you see there on that uh, boat mount, and same with the spare wheel mount. If you're gonna be uh, mounting an outboard or a tire, adjust the length, so the keel of the outboard, or use a rubber pad that I got from Clark's Foam and Rubber. You remember yeah. from yep. up north? So the weight of the keel, so the deck is holding the whole weight of the outboard, and then you won't get the resonance um, going through that, that piece of RHS or SHS that you see sticking up through the deck. Um, can you tow an X2 behind a T8 730? I would love to see it. And yeah. I'm sure if you were in a real sticky situation where one of the cars had died. No dramas, not, not a problem. I don't think Queensland Transport would approve of it <laughs> or any transport department here in Australia. Um, I will actually, oh, heritage moment. The control room's onto it at the moment. We went through the whole process about three years ago of trying to get a Patriot X1 registered as a lead trailer, like a B double semi. Did you? So we could tow two X1s in tandem oh on a trip. God. We went through the whole process and I thought that we were gonna uh, get allowed to do it. I can't remember, it's going back, it's actually longer than that, it's probably three, four years ago. How cool would that have been? Oh, Seeing us rolling up the highway with two X1s in tow. Oh. But the transport department didn't like it and they can that idea. Um, I think that's gonna, that's gonna wind up uh, the Q&A. Um, we're actually not doing too bad. Not as bad as I, I thought we were before. Um, so look, we do have one more surprise left in stall uh, for everybody that's here. Now, as you know, Patriot Campers are very, um, what's the word? We are now very well represented in the United States. We're going on to our third year in the United States. We have a great uh, following of uh, fans in the United States of the brand, but more importantly, we have an amazing culture of customers in the United States. Sarah and I have spent a lot of time in the United States. We form some amazing relationships with some amazing people in the US. And I've got to say, one of, one of my most favorite people in the United States um, is gonna be the guys that we're gonna cross over to now. Introducing Mr. Clay Croft from Expedition Overland. Can we get him up? Live? Cool. Nice. Hello, Patriot Campers from America. Glad to be on. Uh, Justin did, you asked me to uh, show us, show you guys around, especially our Toy Hauler 610 uh, and how we use it. Now, we have used all kinds of stuff from Patriot Campers over the years. It's the third year we've been with Patriot Campers. Like right here, we're, we're running the X1H. We're running a PCOR on a Tundra. We're running a PCOR on a Gladiator back there. And we're running a PCOR on our Ram 3500 uh, that hauls our four-wheel campers. But nothing, in my opinion, is as versatile and awesome as the TH610 or the 730 toy hauler. We run the TH610 and we use it for all kinds of stuff. Check it out. So this right here, there's four things. A motorcycle, a mountain bike, a powered paraglider, and the, the brand new General 1000 XP that 
no one has seen yet. You're the first to see that. We run all of these systems on the toy hauler. Uh, our toy hauler is upfitted with a ham radio, a rooftop tent, a full power system suite that we built out in place of the refrigerator. This year on trips that we got coming up, there will be a fridge in there. And uh, yeah, I think it's one of the most versatile things. It is the most versatile tool we have. It's like being able to load up your garage and leave. It's amazing. And uh, when we received this last year, I was like a kid at Christmas for months on end. So yeah, really awesome platform. I don't know how as an adventurer I could live without this thing going forward because it is so versatile and allows me to go do so many different things and not worry about where to take it because it'll if the truck will make it the toy hauler will make it so yeah that's uh the quick and dirty from america on our th610はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。は